Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to find DLL hijacking in a manual screen share. You need to add this method to your screen share guide so then you do not get bypassed by this in the future. Now, just a little bit of insight into what DLL hijacking is. It's basically where a program tries to call a binary's path and the binary is no longer there. So instead, the user will place a binary in that place. So then when the process launches, it then actually loads a malicious or different DLL to what it expects to load. In this case, I have put my cards clicker in place of a binary path so then Explorer upon startup will load my clicker into the PC instance. This only works for external clients and loaders. And now I'm just gonna go into the detection. So to start off with on screen right now, I'm just gonna put three of the most common ways that people do this. So then you can check them manually without having to go through this method. All of these are detected with this method. I'm gonna do two methods for you today and then a slight miscellaneous one afterwards. So to start off with, you're going to download system informer and make sure you have the canary version installed that is okay if you just go to the web browser and if you just search up system informer canary downloads it's going to be the second or first link down and you're going to want to install this one upon installing and launching you need to go to the options button and you need to make sure the kernel mode driver is enabled you need to click close then it'll ask you to reload your system informer and then you'll be here now you need to go to the top right Go to CSRSS and you want the highest bytes. So here it's going to say private bytes for the service. We have one that's lower, one that's higher, the higher one. We're going to double click on that one. Then we're going to make sure on the memory tab, you'll start on this tab. We need to go over to memory. You need to make sure then we click options, strings, four, and then select these two. Nothing's ever in the image memory regions, so we can leave them out. Now we're going to click OK. It's going to pass CSRSS. Then you want to go ahead and click filter, regex case insensitive. And then you're going to go ahead and place in this regex right here. This is going to be in the description. And now we're going to go ahead and click enter. And now it's going to filter down to all of the file paths ending in DLL and starting with a drive letter. Now we're just going to select all of these. Then we're going to right click, click copy result. Then we're going to open up a notepad. And then inside the notepad, if I just drag it over here, I'm going to paste all of these in. Then we're going to control A, control C again. And now we're just going to go over to a duplicate remove site. This is basically going to remove duplicate lines. So then we don't do lots of useless passing. We're going to control V, click submit. And now we're going to see here that it's now removed 37 lines of duplicate and we have 199 remaining. Now we're going to select here, control C. And now we're going to go back to the notepad and enter it in here and then click save. And then now we're going to go to our downloads folder. We're going to go ahead and create a new folder. I'm just going to name this one SS3. I'm going to go ahead and open up this one, rename this in here. We're just going to call it paths, click enter. And now there's nothing else you need to do with this here. Now we're going to go to eSpoken's GitHub, github.com slash spoken. He's one of our developers at Detect who made our free tools. We're just going to go to repositories, paths parser, and now we're just going to go and click on the releases tab down here, the top one, paths parser. Now we want to go ahead and make sure that this is inside of SS3. I'm just going to remove the one at the end because it's useless. Upon downloading, navigate to the folder and then double click on paths parser. And now it's going to start traversing through every single one. And you're going to want to take a look at each ones that flag either non-signed or deleted or the one with rules. So for example, this one is a complete false flag. There's nothing here of concern, but this one, this one is my cards clicker cheat. And we are going to confirm this by going over to system informer and just opening up notepad. And then upon getting into the notepad, we're just going to go to modules, click options, load module. And then we're going to go ahead and navigate to the file directory of where that one was. And then it was called CSCAPI.dll. Here we go. We can open this one and then we're going to see that this was in fact my cards clicker and now that can prove that we have launched it in instance some other things that we can take a look at so for example we can go over to explorer inside of system informer go to the module section we're going to full screen this you can just search up csc api you can see it's currently a loaded module also if they close or decide to unload the modules then you can go ahead and navigate right click on explorer miscellaneous unloaded modules and then you should be able to see it here just filter by name and then look for whereabouts c is and then it should appear here as well. That also is proof of it being in instance and then it being unloaded and then trying to bypass. Now, I have seen it sometimes 
bypass CSRSS. So what you can do is, is you can just dump the whole of Explorer by going memory, options, string, four, and then these two again, if we remember correctly. Click OK. Now it's just going to pass through the whole of Explorer. Then we're going to filter the exact same regex, and then we're going to do the exact same thing. And we're just going to copy all of these get rid of the duplicates, run through the pass parser again, and I'll get back to you when we're passing again. And now we have just started passing through and we have found the cheat again right here with the rules next to it. And then we would just prove it the exact same way. Now that is everything you guys need to know about DLL hijacking and how it's used and two detections for DLL hijacking. And as always, you guys should definitely check out my screen share tool. It is the best screen share tool on the market right now, clearing every other screen share tool in scenes like Minecraft, 5M and Roblox. And there is more coming soon. You guys should join the Discord in the description and also purchase a license and start detecting cheaters today quicker, faster and better than ever before. Now, thank you guys and enjoy your day.